Believe it or not, the Sega CD was home to a handful of really good shoot 'em ups. I really enjoyed Android Assault, otherwise known as Bari Arm. It had some great parallax and the weapon system was really cool. Lords of Thunder was a different kind of shooter that combined melee attacks and a killer rock soundtrack to the mix. While it wasn't quite as colorful as the PC Engine release, it was still quite solid overall. Robo Aleste was a fine continuation of the classic series that I felt was just as good as Musha. There wasn't a ton of vertically scrolling shooters on the Sega CD, so I really appreciated its release. When I first saw KO Flying Squadron in 1995, I thought for sure that it was a working design's localization. Not so, as it happened to be JVC that released it. They had supported the Sega CD with numerous other games as well, but this one is likely the most popular of the group. The story centers on Rami, a bunny suit wearing young girl who is the keeper of the key of the secret treasure. While out and about, the key is stolen, and Rami must ride her trusty dragon spot into battle to recover it from a super intelligent raccoon of all things. It's all set up quite comically, and the opening storyboards let you know right away that this is going to go the route of other games like Konami's Parodius series. It's become quite the collector's item in recent years, with the US release often commanding a few thousand dollars complete. Question is, just how good of a game is KO Flying Squadron, and is it worth your time to investigate it? In this episode, we will be taking a look at it, and I'll let you know what I think of this mythical collector's item. KO Flying Squadron is a horizontal shoot 'em up and what some people insist on calling a cute 'em up because of the comically inspired art design. Assuming control over your dragon, you have three buttons to worry about. The first is a simple speed change option that allows you to control how fast you go. This can help you navigate tight spaces a bit better or run effectively from a screen full of bullets. Your second button is for weapon fire which consists of both your main blaster and your secondary attack in one rapid fire solution. It's important to temper your desire for that ease of use however because letting off the attack button for a few seconds charges two satellite dragons that assist you with additional firepower. They follow you around similar to the options seen in the Gradius games and provide some much needed support. Power ups for your main and secondary attacks show up separately. Your main blaster comes in two flavors. One is a spread attack that covers much of the screen and the other is a more focused beam attack to concentrate your damage more effectively. Your secondary attack can be either homing dragons, bombs, or a controllable spiked weapon. The third button is used directly with your options and is called your kamikaze attack. Here your options explode forward with a vicious and damaging attack to help you in tight situations or against more powerful enemies. With your options destroyed, you must again let off the attack button so they recharge in return. It's important to visit the options menu in this one because there you can set a few things other than changing your configuration and difficulty. You can also change the hitbox on the main sprite as well as adjust the speed setting to your liking. The stages are laid out as you'd expect. You fight some bad guys for a bit and then a much larger enemy ends the level. One hit and you're dead, so you'll likely need some practice to see the end. There is some major differences between easy, normal, and hard, so it caters to a wide variety of skill levels. The first few stages are a cakewalk even on normal, but hard will send your ass to the continue screen, lickety split. There are seven stages to play, each becoming more difficult as you progress. The graphics of KO Flying Squadron are colorful, well animated, and impeccably drawn. Rami and her dragon look great and the enemies and their weapons all have both a menacing and hilarious nature to them. There's quite a bit of parallax scrolling across its seven stages and the animated storyboards look as good as anything on the platform. The engine can also handle quite a bit of on-screen action. You don't see it often on easy, but on the harder difficulties, there's a lot of stuff to keep track of. Hell, at times I thought for sure it'd grind to a halt, but rarely will you feel anything that really messes with the flow of the action. 
It does have some sprite flicker here and there that can be distracting, and sometimes the background seem to take a backseat to the sprites. But otherwise, KO is a really nice looking 16-bit game that easily competes with the other options on the Sega CD. Sound and music is incredibly important to a shoot 'em up. Some of the better games in the genre are built upon not just great graphics and gameplay, but also the soundtrack that drives it all. KO has an upbeat and energetic sound that really sits well with the action. It's varied and a joy to listen to. Let's see if you agree. Tearing down KO Flying Squadron isn't a hard thing to do. While fun, the gameplay here doesn't do anything new that you hadn't already seen a hundred times before. The power-up system works, but isn't deep or varied. The graphics look good, but nothing the Genesis couldn't have pulled off on its own. There are no great scaling effects to make special use of the Sega CD. It's almost too easy on anything but hard, and most of the bosses are bullet sponges, and the battles go on for way too long. It also has loads of discrepancies like the color of your dragon being different between the cutscenes and the gameplay. I mean, you could make a case that KO is quite the average shooter in a sea of better games that represent the genre. Even many of the popular gaming magazines at the time were hard on it. But as with most games, it's the execution here that creates its appeal. The gameplay is fast and responsive and the art design is a joy to behold in its comical depictions. The great music does a lot to tie it together as well. Really, it's the kind of experience that if you only spoke about each individual category, the game may seem rather weak, but I think the sum of its parts really do make it a really good game. The end result is just a fun and immensely playable shooter that is instantly accessible thanks to its low difficulty and the likable cast of characters. I won't argue that it's genre-defining or one of the best shooters ever, but I will say this. KO Flying Squadron is far from a bad game. Reviewing games like this is tough. It was originally released in Japan in 1993, but didn't make its way west until around the beginning of 1995, only a handful of months away from the release of the Sega Saturn. That of course meant that not many were pressed and few were sold, leading to its scarcity. While I fully recommend that you play it, buying it is extremely expensive and there are no other legitimate modern ways to play it. That means pretty much I'm telling you to pirate it, and it's worth pirating. The Sega CD library has some good shooters in it, but KO here is different enough from the rest of the pack to warrant a look. The easy to pick up challenge even makes it one you can play with your kids, but unfortunately it's only one player, so you'll need to take turns. A sequel showed up on the Sega Saturn in 1996 and changed things up quite a bit. Instead of a straightforward shoot 'em up, it's more of a run and jump platformer, but it does share some of the same art design. If you do go after a physical release of KO on the Sega CD, I highly recommend it's the Japanese release you settle on. While it's still hundreds of dollars itself, it's much cheaper than the US variant and is readily available as well. 
If you have a Mega SD, have no issue emulating, or play burned games on your Sega CD, this one is a no-brainer to add to your collection. It won't dethrone anything, but it's a heck of a good time all the same. I'm Sega Lord X. Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.